What is going on, everybody? Welcome into another edition of Front Office Insights. I'm Howard Bender. I've got the GM, Jim Bowden, by my side. Time for another MLB team breakdown, and we head out to the American League West Los Angeles Angels. Mike Trout, Shohei Otani. Uh, this is a team that really needs to get these two guys into the playoffs. Last year, uh, finished a miserable 73-89, and 89, third place in the Nash- in the American League West. Ah, oh, Jim. Well, I mean, I guess let's just start off here with the, uh, with the offseason for the Halos. Did they do enough to get Otani and Trout into the playoffs this year? Well, I certainly think they put them in striking range. I do. And I think they've got a chance for a wild card berth. I, I do think, you know, the key is going to be, like most teams, can you stay healthy? And as we'll get to the starting pitching in a minute, and can the starting pitching pitch as well as they did from the all-star break on last year? But let's get to the moves that they did make this offseason and how they got better. So they made a trade with the Twins and picked up infielder Gio Urshela, a player that can back up at third, short, and first for them. Um, they want depth, right? They want if Anthony Rendon gets hurt at third or Jared Walsh get hurts at first, they wanted to have some security. Um, they made a trade to pick up Hunter Renfro from the Milwaukee Brewers. They were tired of watching Joe Adele not develop. They felt like they needed another 25 home run hitting outfielder to put around Mike Trout. So now with Renfro on one corner, Taylor Ward on the other other corner in front of Trout, nobody has to guess what a prospect's going to do or a suspect's going to do because now they've got proven proven numbers in that lineup, something the Angels really wanted to do. Um, then in terms of free agency, they, they went uh, up the street uh, on Route 5 to, the, to Dodger Stadium and they they plucked Tyler Anderson from the Dodgers on a three-year, $39 million deal after he had his career year with Los Angeles, learning to pitch with his secondary pitches and not throwing a fastball. Uh, they picked up Carlos Estevez to close, two years, $14 million, uh, for him. Uh, they picked up Brandon Drury from uh, the other side of, of, of five, down down in San Diego. They took him from the Padres, got him on a two-year, $17 million deal. Drury can play first, second, third. Again, gives them depth, gives them a little bit length in the lineup. They picked up backup outfielder Brett Phillips to bring some energy to that clubhouse, which he certainly brings. And they also signed Matt Moore to help the bullpen on a one-year, $7.5 million deal as well. So it was an active offseason. No, they didn't swing big, but they really built up the depth, Howard. And I think Perry Manazin, the the GM, when I talked to him at the winter meetings in San Diego, said, look, that was the goal in the offseason for them. They knew they had to build up depth because last year when they had injuries, they couldn't withstand it. Now they feel like if somebody goes down, they've got enough talent to continue to compete. All right. <clears throat> interesting. Very interesting. Let's go around the uh, the diamond here and let's see who and what we like for fantasy purposes. Logan O'Hop behind the plate. Max Stassi backing him up. Uh, Jared Walsh, who's uh, coming back from thoracic outlet syndrome surgery. Uh, at first, Brandon Drury is penciled in at second base right now. Anthony Rendon at third. Uh, Luis Rengifo at short. Uh, and then in the outfield, you've got uh, Taylor Ward, Mike Trout, Hunter Renfro, and Shohei Otani DHing. I mean, from a fantasy standpoint, Jim, I love Otani, Ward, Trout. I tolerate Renfro. How do you see the rest of this playing out? Yeah, so um, look, I think both Trout and Otani are first-round picks. Um, I think Trout's a bargain wherever you get him these days. I think everybody's just so used to him being hurt that no one's grabbing him. But Dude is getting mad disrespect in drafts right now. Yeah. Mad and, disrespect. And which is good because I've been able to get him now. Um, <laughs> something I haven't been able to do the last few years. But now I'm getting him. I'm actually getting him in the second round in some drafts, which Oof. is just shocking to me. Uh, you know, I, I look at 45, 50 homers, and I look at, you know, potentially leading the league and on base percentage kind of talent. Uh, not going to steal bases anymore. I get that. Uh, I, I don't need that from him. I'll get that elsewhere. Uh, but he's a stud. Shoei Otani's a stud, whether you have the pitcher or whether you have the hitter or whether you have some kind of league that allows both or or a choice of one or the other. Either way, I'll still take Otani. Thank you very much. I have no shares of him, not on purpose, because I would love to have Shoei. I think he's a unicorn and I think he's the most talented baseball player this game has ever seen. We've never seen this before, not even Babe Ruth. And what he's doing is ridiculous. And I respect him at the highest level uh, for the person he is and the talent that he does both ways. Um, in terms of other guys, position player-wise, let's, let's start with Logan O'Hop. 
good catching prospect. Uh, I like the bat to ball skills. Um, he makes contact. I really don't know what to expect from him outside of the fact I would take a chance. You know, when I get to the end of drafts, if I am in a two catcher league, Ohop, you know, is a guy that, uh, that I'll chase. Now, the interesting argument is between him and Shea Langer, Lears of Oakland. They're two of the better young catching prospects. Langer's Oakland had picked up in a trade with Atlanta. Ohop is the guy that the that the Angels picked up in the deal with the Phillies that sent Brandon Marsh to Philadelphia. So both these guys were traded for. But Ohop is in the right lineup, and he looks like a contact guy. So when you're in a lineup that has Rendon and Trout and Otani and Renfro, you got a chance to maybe be a sleeper at catcher. Uh, so, you know, I'll have an eyeball on him. Uh, Jared Walsh, I stay away from because of the injury and the fact that, you know, he does have some holes and you got to kind of mix and match him. It gets kind of annoying. Rendon, I think, could be comeback player of the year. Uh, he's won it once. I could see him winning it again. Again, I don't know if he can stay healthy, but I know one thing, he can still hit. And he has not lived up to his contract. He hasn't even had one good year with the Angels yet. Perhaps this is it. Um, Renfo's 25 homers, and that's about it, right? Um, and then Taylor Ward, I think is a really, really good player. And I think when you look at what, what he did last year before he got hurt, um, he was one of the top five hitters in the game to start that the first two months of the year. And it wasn't a fluke because back then when Joe Madden was still managing the angels before he got fired for Phil Nevin, Joe Madden told us last March that not only would Taylor Ward start, but you, but Taylor Ward was going to be a good hitter. And we all kind of looked at him and scratched our head and said, what are you talking about? And Joe Madden was right on, on Ward. So now he's healthy, and I think he's certainly a guy that I would have interest in in drafts. Yeah, I mean, listen, 281 average, 360 OBP uh, last year, 23 home runs, 65 RBI. What I love the most is that we hear that he's going to be leading off. So he's going he's gonna to be the guy sitting right in front of Otani and Trout, uh, all season long, can you say runs galore? I can. Mm-mm-mm. So tasty. Um, all right, let's uh, let's head over to the pitcher's mound, Jim, and let's see what we've got going on here. Obviously, Shohei Otani, the pitcher, uh, we have interest in. Tyler Anderson, the lefty they brought in. Patrick Sandoval, I always love talking about post-hype sleepers. Um, I still have uh, a, an affectation for Sandoval in, uh, in leagues as like a number four or five starter. Reed Detmers, Jose Suarez, Jaime Barilla, Tucker Davidson. So there's, there's depth to this starting rotation, Jim. Not to mention the fact that there has been talk of the Angels going to a five-man rotation this year, especially if they're not planning on keeping Shohei Otani. They'd probably rather just kind of run him out there every five days. What do you think from a pitching standpoint here, from a fantasy standpoint, how do you like these hurlers? Yeah. So I think you kind of nailed my interest, like Otani for sure. I'll take him as my number one star. That's great. Um, I like Sandoval as my fifth guy. Yeah, I, I, I do like him. I think he's very underrated. You know, I think one thing I like about the angels rotation is they all had ERAs of three or below, you know, from July on last year. Can they maintain it? We'll have to wait and see. Um, but you know, for fantasy outside of Otani and Sandoval, I'm not going to take a chance. You know, Detmers may live up to it, possibly. I don't think Anderson's going to be able to repeat what he did with the Dodgers. I could be wrong. I know the Angels are hoping I'm wrong. Maybe, I, I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> but, I don't think you're wrong. I don't but see but I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, and, then, uh, and then we talked about the bullpen already with the arrival of Carlos Estevez. Uh, they do have a couple of other names. Could this is? Do you think Estevez is the bulk of the saves, or do you think it's all of the saves? Where are you at with this group? I mean, I'm I'm going into this in spring training in the season thinking Estevez is going to get the saves. Uh, you know how I feel about closers. Usually, the closers that start in April are no longer closing in June. Once they blow a few saves, and all of a sudden someone else gets a shot. But as of now, if I were to draft the closer off this team, it is Estevez. All right, yeah. And listen, you look at the Fantasy Baseball ADP. You can find all of that at FantasyAlarm.com. Uh, and the ADP dictates that it's a, it's a very late-round pick. So uh, I would definitely give a, give a look there, especially if you think that the Angels could be headed uh, towards the playoffs. Let's talk about the, uh, the prospects on the horizon. Let's talk about the depth. Um, what do you think, Jim? Are are there names that we want to uh, we want to stay on top of here for possible promotion this season? Yeah, I mean, look, I, 
promotion this season? Yeah, I think definitely. I mean, first of all, we talked about Logan O'Hop. That's the best prospect, and you know he'll be starting catcher on opening day. Um, Chase Silsas, we saw some last year. The right-handed pitcher certainly is a guy that we'll probably end up seeing. We know how many starters everybody goes through, so he'll get an opportunity there. Um, they've got a left-hand pitcher I like, Kai, Kai Bush. Um, at you know, they've got a very interesting shortstop, Zach Nito. Probably doesn't get here, here this year, but I, I like Nito a lot and I uh, think he's got a chance to be a guy. What's interesting is they've got a catching prospect named Edgar Caro, which is the perfect trade piece for them. Like, that's the one guy they could get at the deadline if they were buying, if they were going after a guy. Uh, that is someone they could trade because they have a hop at the big league level. Um, and, you know, speaking of that, and we should talk front office for a minute. Uh, it was very interesting the other day. The owner, Artie Moreno of the Angels, was very clear in his wording when asked about Shohei Otani uh, and if he was going to trade Otani if he's not able to sign him. And his answer was this. He said, as long as we're contending, I'm not going to trade Shohei Otani if he's not signed. And what that means clearly when you read between the lines is if they get to the, the to trade deadline and they're not contending, they will trade Otani. And that's something to pay attention to. If you're an AL or NL only league and you're trying to decide between two superstars to draft, keep in mind that there is a possibility Otani gets dealt with the trade deadline. So if you were picking between Otani or Judge, for an example, with your first pick, I would tend to go to the player you know is not going to be traded and judge because you don't want to be in an AL only league and then Otani gets traded to the New York Mets at the trade deadline and, and now all of a sudden you're scrambling. So keep that in mind. Sorry, I was just daydreaming about Shohei Otani and, and the Yankee pinstripes there for a moment. Let me just catch my breath. <gasps> Whew, boy, that would be tasty. That would be so tasty. And let's wrap up the uh, the Los Angeles Angels here, Jim. One fantasy sleeper, one fantasy bust. Who you got? I'm going to go with Taylor Ward as as my sleeper. Um, you know, we we saw snippets of what he can do last uh, beginning of last season. And I think he's in the right lineup. And you mentioned it uh, just a few minutes ago. When you've got Trout, Otani, Rendon hitting behind you, boy, do you have a chance to score a whole bunch of runs, maybe even lead the league in runs. I mean, that's the potential. So I think he's a sleeper where he's going. And my bust is Tyler Anderson. Dodgers did a very unique thing with him and basically said, hey, we're gonna we're, we're not going to have you throw the fastball. We're going to throw you just secondary pitches, and we're going to trick everybody all the time. And that works great when you're there, and it works great when your research and development department is as good as the Dodgers is. The Angels don't have that. And if he starts to go sideways, I'm not completely convinced they're going to be able to put him back on track. So he'll be my bust. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. Right there for the, the sleeper and the bust. Taylor Ward, yes. I don't have enough shares of him right now heading into this season. I'll probably be... Uh, grabbing him with uh, in my upcoming drafts. No interest in Tyler Anderson. I completely agree with you. Uh, Jim, as always, thank you so much for the breakdown. Love the insights there. And you guys, again, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Front Office Insights. Uh, be sure to check it out on the SXM app. You can uh, go to search Fantasy Alarm and get all of our MLB team breakdowns. You can also go to our free Fantasy Baseball Draft Guide uh, over at FantasyAlarm.com, and they're, uh, they're all available to you there as well. When we come back, Jim Bowden and I, well, what are we going to talk about? How about some football? NFL talk? Nah. It's baseball season, baby, and we're going to continue that. When we return, it's Fantasy Alarm, Sirius XM, Fantasy Sports Radio. Okay, I'll see you guys in 10 minutes. All right. Hey, I'll, Jim, I'll stay connected. Okay, there's stuff uh, on the dot.